Come in, come in. Please come in. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I hope the video won't have issues this week. We are hardwired in, so please come in. Come in, come in. Come one, come all. <laughs> How is everyone? I know y'all probably think I am so crazy for coming in and being silly off the jump. But yes, this is me and this is how I am. I am always acting up. Hello, everyone. We're Miss Sheila Cushionberry. How are you as well? <laughs> as always, my dear, how are you? How are you? Good evening, Sheila Cuffy and Terry Starling. This phenomenal creation. Hello, darling. Maria, hello. <laughs> Hi, Diane. How are you today? Welcome. Welcome. Hey, Miss Ursa. How are you? <laughs> Vola, yas. You on time, my dear? Yas. <laughs> hi, Barbara Zekas. And hi, Glam Glam. How are you today? <laughs> Princess and Monkey. Welcome. I don't remember your name being in here. Welcome. Thank you for enjoying the videos, although I haven't been putting them out like I should. I apologize to you all. <laughs> Sammy Strunge, hello. Hello, Miss Joni Thurman and Debbie Kidd. Hello, how are you? <laughs> how is everyone this evening? Hello, hello. How is everyone? Geechee boy, hi you. How are you today? You're in the embroidery room right now. Mm, can you hear me over the hum of the machinery <laughs> don't be in there watching me and messing up that's what i do <laughs> i'll have videos and music or whatever going the music is good but the videos sometimes i'll watch things on youtube and when i'm watching them and i'm supposed to be paying attention and turn my back and all chaos breaks loose in the studio so don't do that get you boy <laughs> hi miss tori hello renee how are you guys today hello hello you made the 5 by 7 hand sanitizer. It came out very nice, Maria. Awesome. What design did you do? Which one did you choose? Uh, she has so many options of so many different designs, you guys. Please, I hope you guys have really been going over there and taking advantage. She has awesome prices, very affordable, awesome designs. A lot of things that cover a lot of different types. I mean, you, you go from sloths to rainbows and unicorns to honeybees. I mean, she has a phenomenal uh, selection of different types of designs for her in the hoop projects. Very simple in the hoop projects. I know she's probably going to beat me down because I had one video I needed to be doing um, and my party is kind of like, took things over this week so I need to get that video out this week um, I do have another video for her that uh, I am going to put out so <laughs> I'm excited about this one too even though I probably won't get to use it anytime soon but <laughs> you guys will just have to wait and see Malika, Malika I'm sorry I know I'm probably gonna butcher that but hi how are you my dear welcome I appreciate you being here <laughs> Diane Beal, hello, hello, and Geechee Boy, yeah, yeah, don't mess up. <laughs> Barbara Zeka says, sorry, you're going to have to watch later. KU basketball is on. <gasps> what? I take backseat to basketball? <laughs> I'm just kidding, girlfriend, do you enjoy the game? Eat an extra wing for me since I don't eat meat anymore. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy. I appreciate you taking the moment to even come in here. And let us know that you were here. I appreciate that. Um, Terry, hello. Hello, my dear. Vitrilia, hello, my dear. Bicko, late. Eh, not late. <laughs> Welcome, my dear. Sheila, where do you get the hand sanitizer? Are you talking about the hand sanitizer or the in the hoop um, hand sanitizer case? If you're talking about the hoop, in the hoop hand sanitizer case. Ugh, tongue twister. You can get that from Designs by Little B B E E dot com. Designs by Little B dot com. And she also has a Facebook page. If someone wouldn't mind linking that in the chat, I'd appreciate it. Um, she's awesome website, awesome um, you know, all kinds of in the hoop things. Now, if you're talking about the actual hand sanitizer that goes inside, 
um, you can use in her uh, in the hoop cases. You can use the ones from Dollar Tree. Um, the ones that I was using was from Bath and Body Works. Um, I don't know why I choose to torment myself going here to get their hand sanitizers uh, because I am allergic to perfumes and scents and stuff. And to go in there triggers a migraine, but whatever. So I found this one. This has a very, very light scent. My kids helped me pick this one out. Um, I like Bath and Body Works, but I, I just, I can't deal with it. But that's where you get her designs. And that's, those are the hand sanitizers that I was using in her cases. Vola, how is your finger? My finger is still hurting. Um... I already had a doctor's appointment in the morning, so I'm going to ask them to look at it because my mom begged me. Well, she didn't beg me. She pretty much demanded that I go see the doctor for my finger. <laughs> I guess because of being diabetic, I really should be uh, very aware of what goes on with my appendages. And so because of that, uh, you know, so I'm not worried about it, but she wants me to go get it checked out. So I'll be doing that first thing in the morning. Eight dad blame 30 in the morning. <laughs> Maria, you chose the heart with the monogram. Yeah, that's a pretty one. I made one for me and one for a friend. I'll post a picture to the group. Sweet. I'd love to see that. Brenda Scott, all the way from Newfoundland, Canada. Welcome. We appreciate you being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Charmaine says, thank God on your live. I need help with your SE400. Well, we can kind of guide you a little bit. Now, I don't know that we'll be able to do that on the live right now but we'll try and help you out as much as possible um there's a lot of troubleshooting that's one of the things that i want to be sure that people understand when they contact me and they're asking for help you know because something's going on with the machine or it's acting up or you know trying to figure out the settings and things i mean there's a whole lot of troubleshooting that needs to take place and i like if you were to say, well, my thread is nesting on the bottom. Well, I wouldn't know right offhand why it would be nesting on the bottom, you know, unfortunately. So I would say, OK, well, you need to check, you know, one of the OK, let me go ahead and throw this tip out there while I'm thinking about it. And before I forget, one of the things that I have learned and have found out through research is if there's a problem under the embroidery. OK, so on the back side of the embroidery, while you're embroidering, if you wind up with nesting, thread catching or something on the bottom side, usually the problem is up top. OK, if you have a problem on the top side, say the, the strands not, you know, the embroidery is not smooth or something, whatever the case may be up top, usually the problem is down below in the bobbin area. So because of that. Now, that's usually, that's not every single time. So don't, you know, be like, well, she said it was, you know, well, I mean, I did say that, but it's not every time. But keep that in mind when you start to have a problem and check. So if, if it's bunching on the bottom, check the thread path up top from your thread from the spool. Make sure that, that the thread's not getting caught on anything. Make sure it's not tangled. Make sure it's following every single guide that that thread is supposed to go through. Make sure that you're threading it with your your presser foot up. Even with the uh, sewing machines, make sure that you have that presser foot up on the embroidery machine and thread it after the foot is up. Make sure all of that first before you get mad at the machine for acting up on the bottom because usually it's user error. Sometimes it's the thread. Sometimes it is bad thread. So what I suggest is try it with a different spool of thread before you get mad, you know, so you, it's a process of elimination. So we'll try, my dear. I don't know what problem you're having yet, um, but we'll definitely uh, see if we can help you out somewhat. <laughs> Sheila Cuffey, you was talking about the in the hoop case. OK, cool. Yeah, it's designed by littlebee.com. And you can Google that actually, you know, make sure that you get to the right website. Shayla McKinnon, hello to you, Sheila Cuffy. You're welcome. Karen Caldwell, hey, darling. How are you? <laughs> Good evening, Miss Ethel Smith and Miss. How are you today? How are you? How are you? I appreciate you being here. 
Princess says, Monkey says, do you only do designs by Little B Designs? Bows and Clothes has some amazing designs too. I do not only do designs by Little B, okay? The only reason why I have videos for designs by Little B is a couple of reasons. Number one, she allows me to do the videos, okay? I, I do the videos with her permission. Um, and number two, I love her designs. Now, what I have a tendency to do is put my feelers out every so often. And if I come across a design that like really knocks my socks off, I'll reach out to the designer and say, hey, look, you know, I'm really interested in doing a video tutorial on this because I really like it. So that way, you know, I have their permission and there's no conflict or issues for whatever reason. Sometimes some people are funny about their stuff. So um, but I have not reached out to them. Um, but who knows? There may come a time where I'll come across a design and it really floors me and I want to do a tutorial on it. So that's pretty much how that works. There's no you know, loyalty is, oh my gosh, I can only buy it. No, it's not that. It's just, you know, she had some really awesome designs, awesome prices that factors in as well, because I know a lot of times, and they know a lot of times I know in embroidery, it can be expensive. It can get very pricey really quickly, especially if like one designs by little B, she has tons of designs that I like. Um, Bugalina also has tons of designs that I love and the price was outstanding. So I could buy tons of designs and like really go ham on the designs that I liked instead of me saying, oh my God, these are six bucks a piece. I, I can't buy nothing but two, you know, so it's affordable and I want to bring you guys affordable designs um or refer you to affordable designs awesome designs no issues with the stitch out at all whatsoever when i contact the um designer of whatever design it is that i'm referring you guys to the feedback is awesome the feedback is immediate um they don't give any flack or if you're like well you know i was thinking about it, and then i don't get attitude stuff like that because i don't want to send you to someone who made me feel uncomfortable you know so that's the whole point with designs by little b and yeah no she's not the only designer that i do but i'm glad you asked but yes i i can't remember have i been to bowls of clothes can't remember if i have um but i'll try and keep that in my back pocket and go by and check her out because i have heard of that site but i don't know for sure that i've been there yet and i won't know till i actually go to it uh whether or not i've been there Sheila Cushenberry, you says you can't do bath and body. It triggers migraines even walking past the store. Not just me. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. So, as <laughs> I go in there and I be like, oh my God, my daughter, every time she's like, mom, you know you're going to get sick. And I'm like, I, uh, I just need lemon scented hands up. Let's just go get that. I hope a breath. <laughs> so, but I love their soaps and their hand sanitizer. So, you know, I just have to get certain scents. Devin, hey Miss E, thank you for all your videos. You're welcome. Thank you for thanking me. I appreciate that. <laughs> for all of those that are learning, been doing it about a month now. Awesome. How's it going? How's your embroidery going? Is it happy embroidery? <laughs> That's what we're shooting for. Maria, you are telling me. Where did it go? Oh, there we go. Going into Bath and Body Works trigger you spending money? Yeah, well, I try not to do that. So we're going to leave that alone. <laughs> I don't get my husband fussing at me, and I ain't even been there in a while, so we're going to leave that alone. <laughs> Nancy T says, hello from Connecticut. Hello to you too, my dear. Be warm up there. Maria says, you better get into that doctor's office tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. Listen to you fussing and get your finger checked. We just left the hospital visiting a friend who's been in critical condition for the past month. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, there's a lot going on in this world, and one thing's for certain I don't need anything else going wrong, and I love my fingers very, very much, even though you can't tell right now with the way it looks, but um, I do want to get it checked. This just, this weekend was really busy, um, and I'm not a fan of going to the doctor. I go enough, so yeah, I'll be there tomorrow, so I'll definitely do it. There it's treasures. Woohoo, you made it. Yes, you did, girlfriend. Welcome. Appreciate you being here. <laughs> Terry says, yes, I've learned that recently, too, about the bottom versus the top and having a problem. Yes, that is very important. Very important. Really cool tip to remember. If it's a problem on the bottom, problem. if there's an issue on the bottom, the problem's up top. Issue up top, problem's on the bottom. 
Um, same as if you wear it, don't tear it. You know, little things like that is what helps keep us um, making sure that we're doing the right things in the studio and not making costly errors. Because every time now, I don't know about you guys, but in my studio, when I make a mistake, I eat it. I have to eat that. Um, and that's not fun. That's not fun. And matter of fact, it frustrates me to the point where I'm just like, you know what? That project is going to have to wait. And I'm having to learn to overcome that because that's not a good quality to have, especially when now a customer has to wait because I've gotten frustrated. Um, but it does happen in with me and that's how I function so I'm having to learn to combat that but you have to eat that if you operate as I do and it can prove to be costly like I did a onesie um for a customer the other day wasn't paying attention and embroidered straight through the darn thing it was perfect embroidery perfect the embroidery was perfect but anyway so when I pulled it off the machine and you know didn't use expletives thank goodness I, i've gotten really good control over that and i was like you know what i'm just gonna have to replace the whole blame onesie and it was a pricey brand of a onesie so i had to go to that name brand store to get the onesie to replace it and it's like now i have a whole pack of them when i only needed the one they don't sell them singly so it's like little things like that you have to keep in mind take your time uh, focus and try not to have too many distractions but you really have to remember those little tips to help you out because mistakes cost man it really does hello Corey fisher from south carolina you're a neighbor welcome i appreciate you being here <laughs> miss social deb hello darling we appreciate you being here maria you say the spool may not be pushed on the way on the spool where the thread just floats off not sure what that's talking about. The spool may not be pushed on pushed on the way on the spool where the thread just floats off. And are you talking about in threading the machine? Let's clarify that so we can make sure I understand you correctly. Evrim, hello, how are you? Welcome. Haven't seen you here before from Philadelphia. Can't wait to embroider a teddy bear's ears. Woo Love your collab video with Kenya. Yes, she's awesome. Learning so much from your videos. Yeah, her videos, the business aspect of it, and making sure everything functions just so in your studios is phenomenal information. I really appreciate working with her, and I'm honored that she would be willing to collaborate with me because of her experience. It's amazing. I enjoy it every time. Scrappy Cats. Hi. Hello, Scrappy Cats. You haven't been here either. Love your videos. Thank you. <laughs> I've been learning a lot. Thanks for all of your hard work and sharing. Inspired me to use your machines again. Very good. Very good. Embroidery. Are you, what machine do you have, actually? It's cool to know and learn what machines we all have. As a matter of fact, go ahead and drop that in the chat. What machines you use? I'd like to know. So that everyone can see. We're all over the board here on the machines that we use. I personally, I have the uh, Entrepreneur PE 655, 655E, sorry, drew a blank. Then I have the PE, 7, uh, PE 500, SE 400, and the SE 425. So three, four machines, four embroidery machines, even though two of them are down right now and I have to get them fixed. <laughs> but that's what I use. Um, Maria Bugalina also has a hand sanitizer that fits the kind that Walmart has. Cool beans. I haven't been on there in a minute, um, uh, even though I'm on her Facebook page, but um, I haven't been on there, so I didn't know she had that. Esora, hello, Esora Hunter Boat. Welcome. You haven't been here either. Hi from Wisconsin. Thank you for your awesome, informative, and enjoyable video tutorials. Thank you. I appreciate you guys letting me know that because sometimes you're like, we know it. Is this? even worth me <laughs> doing i hope everybody's okay with it um they have been a huge help john well thank you john i really appreciate that and if you guys ever have any suggestions for videos please send them either in the email or drop them in the comments below and i'll try and put them on my list of to do videos that at some point in time i'll start to get back to again hopefully soon <laughs> um sheila hello sheila from ms is that mississippi you know how i am with my state state to math i'm just like whatever 
I'm being honest with you guys right now. Devin, my embroidery is going good. Awesome. I have posted some of my practice in the Google group. Hey, I have my first customer. Sweet. Coming up soon. She wants towels and I'm just waiting for my top washable stabilizer, which you will need for your embroidery, for your embroidery. Miss Debbie, hello to you too. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Harriet Anderson, hello Eve. Sorry I'm late. How is your finger? <laughs> you asked about it too. Somebody else asked earlier. It's it's sore, so it, it needs attention, and I'm going to handle that at the doctor tomorrow. <laughs> Miss D, purple one, I'll try to remember the tips. Yeah, jot them down. Um, and at some point, you know, I really probably should post it in the Google Plus group. You know, a little cheat sheet of tips. That's not a bad idea, actually. I'm going to have to work on that because it is important to have something to refer to. You can't remember all of the rules all of the time, you know, so it does help to have like a little cheat sheet thing. So we may have to come up with that. Brian H. Welcome. Appreciate you being here. Hey, I uh, love that you are so helpful to us. Thank you. Still very new to embroidery. Just got your PE 770 this week. Keep up the great work. Well, Brian H., have you ever been in our lives before? If you have, then you'll know we need to ring the bell for you, my dear. If you just got a new baby in your studio. If you haven't been here, well, guess what? You have a new PE770, so you get the bell ring for you. Woo! <laughs> Congratulations on your new baby this week. Hey! We like new babies around here. Congratulations. Be sure to give her a good name. You got to name it. You got to name your machine. Let everybody know that that's yours. You love it and you're going to put it to work so it needs a name. So make sure you remember to do that. Ms. D. Purple One says, yes, they do. Awesome. Carol Bowles, thank you for the how-to videos. They have been very helpful to a newbie as I have just started embroidering on my brother SE400. Awesome. Now, did you get your machine soon too? Let me know so that we can ring the bell for you. Miss D Purple One says, hello, you're late. You're not late. Bickham says, if all else fails, I know that's right. Cut thread up top, pull through, and re-thread it completely. As long as that foot is up, that's where a lot of people make that mistake. They will not remember to put that foot up. And I, how do I know that? It's not that I used to do it, too. I used to do it, too. So make sure the foot is up and then re-thread. And make sure that your bobbin tension is correct. That is awesome as well if i had a bobbin with me i can show you a really quick way to check that bobbin tension but i don't have it with me so we'll have to do a video on checking that but i think i have a video on checking the bobbin tension pretty sure i do out what i need to do what i'm probably going to do this week is do a playlist of things to do when you're having trouble with your machine pretty much because i do have several videos that show what you can do when you're having issues with your machine so we may have to put that together so that there's a quick reference for someone to go to. Devin Cutrell, you have the 525. Awesome. Milika, the SE425, same as me. Brenda Scott, the brother ULT 2003 D and a PE770. Diane, the Fab Creative 4.5. What's the difference between SE and PE? You know what? No clue. Cool. <laughs> Not a clue, not a clue at all. And what I'll probably do is reach out to brother and ask that question because it's really a good question because I really don't know. The SE400, the Singer Futura Quartet, that's uh, another machine people ask about a lot. The SE400, oh, Maria, sorry I meant that the spool of thread may not be pushed far enough onto the post where the thread unwinds without getting caught on the post. And that's also a good reason why those nets are included in with your embroidery machine you know the little fishnet thingies you can wrap it around the spool to help keep make sure that the thread is coming off where it's supposed to whether it be from the side or whether it be from the top um and yes uh, that's also something very similar issue that could be going on with your embroidery machine and why it's not embroidering the way it's supposed to so yes you're absolutely correct on that as well ethel says you have a brother at pe 770 1034 surger and a sewing 2000 machine <laughs> that you threw in the sewing machine babies too i know that's right 
Charmaine Thomas, hello, welcome to our chat. I wanted to know if I can use my iPad to store your embroidery designs. I'm sorry, you did mention earlier that you had an issue. Okay, so using your iPad to store the embroidery designs, from what I understand, uh, as long as you can upload a file to the iPad, you can use it to store the file. But I'm not familiar with a uh, app on the iPad that will allow you to see or manipulate the embroidery designs. So usually when it comes to using um, something with your embroidery machine and your designs, it would be the computer, whether it be a desktop or a laptop. I'm not familiar with, uh, as I mentioned before, an app that will help you manipulate your embroidery designs. So you can store the files there, but honestly, the best place to actually store your files, if you need a backup for them, would be on a little jump drive, um, depending upon, of course, how many files you have. If you're like somebody I know who I'm not going to mention any names about myself, would have, you know, like maybe about mm, 10 gigs worth of designs. You know, the, the embroidery drive has to be big enough. But once it's big enough, yes, you should back up your files. Speaking of which, we're going into a new month. So we're coming up on April. If you have not, this is a really good tip that uh, um, my Facebook So What Pro, So Help Me With So What Pro, Pro group administrator does every month. At the beginning of the month, the first day of the month, she reminds us all you need to back up your embroidery files. Please, 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 please. If you don't have um, that in your routine, Start that. Find something, a hard drive. Go grab a hard drive from Walmart. They're dirt cheap now, actually. The hard drives are. Uh, they come down tremendously. Get you a hard drive, whether it be a little stick drive um, or the, you know, square, larger hard drive. Get you something and back up your embroidery files. Another thing you can do if you're tech savvy. You can actually sign up for a Google Drive or um, OneDrive is through Microsoft. There's a lot of cloud drives out there. You can back up your designs to those as well. And then that way, even if, you know, your your house burns down, God forbid, and your drives burn up with them, you still have your designs out on the cloud and you can pull them back onto your machines or on your computer or on your laptop when you get those, that stuff replaced. So you really should have a backup for all of that stuff. Now, yes, there are websites where you buy your designs, like Designs by Little B. Her designs, once you buy them, it never expires. So you can always go back to her website and re-download everything if you needed to. But it's a hassle. Why go through all of that when you could just download everything and save it to a jump drive? So at the beginning of the month, End of the month, beginning of the month, you want to get into the habit of backing up your design so that if anything ever happens to your computer or your machine, you'll be able to actually um, save those and have them as a backup. So you definitely want to do that. That's a good practice to get into. Um, let us see. Sheila Chan says it is Mississippi. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. Now, guess what? Next week, I'm going to ask the same thing again. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, let's see what we have here. You, Sugar Blossoms. Hello. Welcome. And now, why is my chat not wanting to scroll? Come on. Chat. Behave. There we go. Dropbox. Yeah, uh, Joni, I saw that. That's really important. You definitely want to do that. Um, I've gotten behind in my chat. So I apologize. Let's go here. Oh. Sugar Blossoms, I got my second new one in a month. Yes, I'm hooked. I just up to the 5x7 PE770. Thank you for making it all possible. I don't know how I made it possible, but I'm glad you got you a new baby. So we're going to have to celebrate. Did you get her recently? <laughs> With, you said second new one in a month. So hopefully it was this month and we'll definitely ring the bell for you. Renee says, I'm interested in... Oh my gosh, my uh, chat's not going to act right. The Brother Poly Threads. How do they fare with other embroidery machine brands? You're a Husqvarna user. Um, Brother Poly Threads, I haven't had 
much experience with them other than the brother threads that came with the machine. Um, I have found mm, there's a couple of brands that I use back there on my board, but the majority of what I use is the uh, Madeira brand, and I just started using them. I haven't had an issue out of them. I kind of like fell in love with it. So that being the case, you know, I haven't really changed too much of anything else. Um, I hear Sulky is good, but oh, I do use some Sulky from uh, Ganold, and it's okay. My big machine doesn't really care for it too much. My little machines breeze right through it. So uh, a lot of it too could be based on the machine, but you definitely want to find one that works for you and stick with it, girl. Cause I'm trying to tell you, uh, sometimes those machines will cause problems. Uh, Justin, hey Justin! Oh my gosh, y'all! Justin is in here with the chat with us, with his smart self. How you doing, Justin? I called you yesterday. You didn't answer the phone. We gonna address that later, sir. <laughs> Carol Coleman, good evening, my darling. Thank you for being here. Sugar Blossoms, I'm paying for your machines from my baseball advice. Baseball advice. What in the world? I don't know what I said. I ain't going to lie to you, girl, but I'm glad it's working for you, darling. <laughs> awesome. When you making that paper off of your babies, that's the whole goal, isn't it? That's the goal. Trying to make sure that they pay for it and making them pay for themselves is the best way to handle it all. <laughs> Ethel Smith, you got a heat press? Don't do what I did with my heat press, but congratulations on your heat press simmering, baby. <laughs> What are you doing with your heat press, my dear? Are you getting into vinyl or are you doing stones as I am doing? What are you doing with your heat press? Brenda Scott, I've been using SimThread from Amazon. They follow the brother color chart and it's awesome. The only issues end up being user error. That's good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that because a lot of times the Amazon thread gets trashed uh, uh, in chats and in groups online and they're like no that's the worst thread ever blah blah no sorry i've used it successfully i mean and even used up the whole spool because it works so i haven't had any issues out of any thread i've gotten off of amazon so you know i guess to each his own brian h <laughs> what's funny what did i say i sorry <laughs> sugar blossoms you didn't think of naming her your mixer is hazel so your you you said your mixer. Are you talking about the mixer in the kitchen? <laughs> you named her Hazel, but you gotta name your baby too. Hello, Josh. How are you? Carol Bowles. Yes, a surprise from your husband. Hubbies can be awesome. They really can when they look out for you and take an interest in what you do. It's awesome when they do that. Um, Sugar Blossoms. Best to pull the thread down through the bottom. It is after cutting it up at the top. After cutting it up at the top. But guess what I do. We're not going to answer that question. Hunter Bo, my question tonight is, notice how I breeze right over that, right? What do you do about the jump stitches when you are done? I find myself with reading glasses, tweezers, and a tiny exacto knife cutting them. Am I overdoing it? What do you do? Now, I'm going to have to answer that question a couple of different ways, okay? And the reason being is there's a professional way. And then there's a do what you want to do because it just makes sense way. All right. Professional way from a digitizer standpoint as I have been trained. OK, so the jump stitches are there for a reason, especially when you're doing little teeny ones between the letters and whatnot, because even though it should tie itself off before going to the next one, it generally doesn't. So if you cut that jump thread the good possibility your threads will unravel eventually. Um, now that's for the small jumps between letters and stuff like that. For those, generally, I leave them. I'm not going to lie to you because it's more of a hassle to cut them. And in a lot of embroidery, if you take a look at it professionally out on the shelf somewhere, you'll see jump stitches. I mean, it's just a factor uh, and a part of embroidery, all right? Well, but if you're talking about a jump from here to here because it's going from that letter to that letter or something along those lines, I do cut those jump stitches. Um, and even in between when the space is fairly significant between certain letters, I'll cut those jump stitches as well. Um, 
let me see if this particular shirt has the jump stitch on it that I'm talking about. And of course it doesn't. Um, but there was a jump stitch. I don't know how well you can see that between this N and the I and incorporated those comma and then it jumped to there. I cut that. I, I did cut that off of this. But if you'll look on transportation, see how it's in the T A and then the A to the T, it's still there. I leave it. Why why cut that? It's barely noticeable. So I don't take the time to cut that in. As I mentioned, because those letters are so tight and so little, you don't want to chance that unraveling. So I just leave it. Um, you know, that that's pretty much how I do, you know, and that's may not be the best advice to give, but that's what I do. OK, so Kishan says hello from PA. First time in. Yes, you are a first timer. I haven't seen you here before. Welcome. I appreciate you being here. <laughs> Shayla McKinnon, you have the brother SE400 and you just got a brand new single Couture XL550. You bought it because of the bigger hoop. Well, when did you get that singer so that we can figure out if the bell needs to be rung for you, my dear? <laughs> Princess and Monkey. SE is also sewing. Oh, okay. Let me see. That makes sense because both my SE machines are sewing machines as well so that makes a lot of sense thank you for answering that question for us i appreciate that shayla mckinnon you said the 580 oh your futuro is a 580 that's what let me know if i need to ring the bell now i'm gonna get to it eventually <laughs> gaylene hello to you dear brian h says it's your first live feed but you watched a lot of my other videos thank you i appreciate you doing that and again, let me know if you have suggestions. I really uh, want to make sure that the channel is for you guys. It's not something that's just I want to do. It's to help you guys out. So definitely let me know. And Brenda, you cut those small jump stitches too. And I started doing that in the very beginning. In the very beginning, yes, I would cut those little stitches because I was determined you know, my embroidery was going to be super neat. It was going to be super professional, blah, 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 blah. And now that I'm older in embroidery and wiser, <laughs> I'm like, forget that. I'm not doing all that work. Now, that also being said, I have had customers request, you know what? We don't like, I know Justin did that to me one time if he's still in here. Justin, I did some embroidery for him and he was like, um, can we? cut that jump stitch and I was like well I mean I don't want to but yeah I'll cut it for you I didn't tell him I didn't want to but I did it <laughs> because he's my customer and I was going to make him happy so if your customer requests that a jump stitch be cut you can go ahead and cut it but let them know that there's a chance it could unravel okay because you definitely want to throw that in there because if it's going to be washed a lot they really do need to know that and be aware of that okay um let us see Kishan, you have the new pe 770 for about a month you are also in the google plus group and learning to do much well congratulations for your pe 770 and thank you for being a part of the group if there's anyone who wish to be in the google plus group there are instances where i will post links in there to videos that i do have on youtube that are not public um and you could get extra information or extra tips that only available in the google plus group also the Google Plus group allows us all to collaborate and you can post pictures of what you're working on currently and it will also give you, you know, an outlet if you needed to ask questions. There are a lot of professional embroiderers in that group as well. So we definitely have a good time sharing our information back and forth. We have support there. The link is in the description below this video if you click in the description the down arrow beside description and it'll drop down the rest of the description information and you can click the link to join the google plus group if you would like to it's not mandatory but it's definitely a lot of fun <laughs> and justin is in there he gives great information on heat press usage and cutter usage i mean we have a lot of folks in there miss pickup is in there she has a lot of really good information and feedback and tips so there's a lot of professional embroiderers in that group. And it would benefit you definitely to be in there if you're not already. <laughs> um, let us see. Princess and Monkey, you have a new to you PR655, which is why I've been watching you so much lately. 
new to you is a new baby too, honey. It is all right. And that is awesome. Congratulations on your PE PR 655. Congratulations. And if it's new, let me know when you got it. Because if it was recent, we're going to have to ring the bell for you. So you guys let me know. Say, yes, I did get one recently. So I'll know to ring the bell. Because if you just say, yes, I did, I'm not going to remember. <laughs> I'm, being, <laughs> I'm being honest with you right now. Memory sucks. Gaylene, hello to you. Terry says, Shayla, you have the singer too? Eager to know how you get on with your singer. Girl, y'all need to hook up in that Google Plus group and talk to about it. Make sure you guys are on the same page and get the support for the both of you because that, it's beneficial to be able to do that. Red Roses, hi, E, thinking about updating mach embroidery machine to a 6x10. You have PE 770, 5x7. Will the change be worth it? Well, the that question is actually best answered by you okay um if you have the means to be able to upgrade and it won't cause a heart financial hardship my answer would probably be why not you know uh especially if you're not going to necessarily get rid of the 770 because if something happens to one machine you'll have the 770 as backup um, however, if you're not going to be doing a lot of embroidering on a six by 10 level or much bigger than, or bigger than five by seven, then, you know, I mean, you could invest the funds in more thread or more things for the embroidery studio stabilizers and whatnot. It's entirely up to you. You actually need to weigh out your pros and your cons. Okay. And you need to determine what is best for your budget, what is best for your business, if you have a business, what's best for your studio. Those are personal questions you definitely want to look into. Um, I was able to upgrade only because of a blessing, which is why she's named Blessing. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have been upgrading as quickly. And I was going to upgrade to a 770 and pretty much stay there for the time being. So that's you know again a personal question that you'll have to um, answer for yourself so brenda scott uh no hunter boat was talking to brenda scott i'm glad you guys are communicating karen caldwell do you have to use the embroidery thread in the bobbin i use the embroidery thread in the bobbin that embroidery thread is in there for a very good reason miss karen um, the embroidery thread is in there because regular machine uh, thread for regular sewing machines, it sheds. It's made out of cotton. Okay, Embroidery thread is generally made out of polyester or rayon, something that doesn't uh, fluff or, or throw thread shards and stuff all in the embroidery machine because the less dust and shedding and stuff like that that you can have in your embroidery machine the better because unlike a sewing machine which pretty much just show you know does your basic straight stitch you're talking about hundreds of thousands of stitches that you're going to be doing on a regular basis on that embroidery machine so you need the toughest thread that you can get out there that's not going to shed and throw a bunch of mess in your embroidery machine so that is why the embroidery thread is imperative to use with embroidery not saying that you can't because it is very possible to use cotton embroidery thread in the bottom and cut i'm sorry cotton thread in the bottom and cotton thread up top you can embroider with it i mean it's still thread but it can cause a problem in the long run if you keep doing it because that's not what that thread is made for even though it's called all-purpose thread but that's not what it's made for which is why even in walmart if you look at the thread span where the threads are there's all purpose there's heavy duty there's metallic and then you'll see embroidery because it's a specific thread that really should be used with that machine um uh, maria you may download a purchased or free and of course my chat is one stop so i can't see <laughs> um myra that's an important question here oh justin someone i'm here I'm not gonna mess with Justin today. Uh, I'm scrolling back up, y'all. I'm sorry. I need to get back to where I was. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I apologize. Mm. How are you guys today, actually? By the way, while I'm scrolling, I people keep asking me, and I want to know how you guys are doing. Are you guys doing great? 
are you guys doing great as well? Uh, Maria, you said I may download a purchase or free design onto your tablet, but you can't do anything with it. I store my designs in Dropbox. That way I can access them from anywhere. So that makes a lot of sense. I guess download it to your tablet, but then switch it over immediately to your Dropbox. And then you don't want to junk up your tablet with a whole bunch of embroidery files either, now that I think about it. Because I know for me, I have thousands of embroidery designs and there is no way all of that would fit on my little ipad but i have a little itty bitty ipad so it doesn't have much space to it but you also you don't want to bog down your ipad with a bunch of embroidery files so yes if you transfer it to like a dropbox or google drive or something like that then any laptop any computer you can you know access it download it use it and then it can stay on the cloud so yes that is awesome debbie kid back up your accounting software if you use one my drive crashed one time and lost all of my customer files and quickbooks Woo! had to re-enter everyone by hand that is a high food mess i'm trying to tell you it's amazing i was talking to my dad just today who came by to help me unload from a party i had last night and and I come in thinking he's unloading stuff and I hear my stitch eraser just going, you know, but I'm like, oh my God, I can't win. I ain't bought him one yet. I need to get, <laughs> I keep forgetting to order one. And I'm like, oh my God. Then I had the nerve to say, well, can you, can you use it? And, Bruh. Oh my God. No, daddy. I can't, I can't. Anyway, Julie, hi, Miss E from Stonehill, Massachusetts. Been looking forward to live all week. Well, I'm glad you made it, darling, and I'm glad I made it too. So I'm happy to have you here. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, leave them in the chat and keep me from crying. Maria, thanks for reminding me to back up my designs. I lost designs when my old laptop went down. Yeah, I know. Oh, but anyway, back to my dad now that I'm off with a stitch eraser. His phone died, and he couldn't get to his uh, cell phone contacts out of it. And he and I were both just saying, it's amazing how, you know, back in the olden days when I was just a young tyke, <laughs> um, you would write numbers down and memorize phone numbers. You don't have to memorize them anymore because the phone keeps them all, you know. So it's funny how you have to rely on, like, you. we've come to rely on electronics so much to remember everything for us. So, yeah, backing up things is important it really is Bickup says you have an eternal external sorry three terabyte passport and have your designs archived on it i have a couple of um passports actually that my designs and stuff are on when is the last time i backed them up it has been entirely too long since i've done them so i really need to get back on that but yes you definitely want to um get into the habit of backing up your stuff Cindy, welcome. So welcome. I appreciate you being here. Hello from mid-Missouri. Stitching while you listen. Easter orders are hopping around everywhere. It's funny. I've had a lot of people there. It's, it's on both sides of the spectrum. Some people have a lot of bunny design, um, bunny orders, and some people just aren't doing well with those bunnies this year. I choose not to get on that bandwagon um, because I do enough, but um, I'm glad you are doing well with yours, my dear. Maria, I use a lot of Sulky and Isocord thread. I love them both. Um, I haven't used Isocord yet. I'm going to have to get into them and see what, what the hype is about because I've heard Isocord is really good. Bickham says, I have over two terabytes of designs now. Some designs are put on CDs. Wow. I don't, I ain't used a CD in a while, so I'll have to check into that. Um, Shayla said, oh no, Terry said, Shayla, if you're on Google Plus group, you can swap y'all. That is amazing. I love seeing y'all connect. That is just phenomenal for me. Joni, I use Madeira and Floriani. I've heard about Floriani as well. I don't think I've ever used Floriani and need to check them out as well. Shayla McKinnon, I'm glad you joined the Google Plus group. I appreciate that. Thank you. Josh, Miss E, what do you use your heat press for again? I mainly do rhinestones. I have gotten into doing bling. So, um... Actually, I have gotten in doing a whole heck of a lot of bling. I do a lot of bling now. Um, it's really taken off. Um, and I actually do bling parties now, y'all. How cool is that? So if you're ever in the Charlotte area, let me know. And we can get you signed up for a bling party to come and hang out with me one night for a party. But um, <clears throat> with 
bling mostly. I also do some vinyl, which of course is not on the back of my chair now. A um, little bit of vinyl, not much uh, at all actually, because Justin does vinyl. So I kind of would rather funnel vinyl through him instead of me taking vinyl customers. Uh, but if it's an order from a customer that I've done work for, embroidery work for before, sometimes I just go ahead and do it, especially if it's a little teeny order. Something that'll probably get on his nerves. I just go ahead and do it. Um, but mainly my heat press is for bling. That's what I do now in addition to the embroidery. Terry A. I use the cheap Amazon prototype thread <laughs> to start with. And yes, it breaks and fuzzes, but it gets you going for a modest price. I haven't had that issue. I really haven't. I, just, I don't know. It's crazy. I have not had an issue out of that thread. So I don't know what what works with me or not i don't know maybe it's the tension or whatever uh, but i love that amazon thread i i don't use it much because once it's gone it's gone so if there's a specific color up there i'll use it um if i need to but i try not to touch it too much because i don't want it to get gone even though i could order it again now nah, think about it just order it again but then i'd have to have a whole kit instead of the one color and that's the only thing that bothers me with that so i try not to use it unless i absolutely have to uh, maria you also bought some thread from amazon haven't had any trouble with it it stitched out nicely yeah i didn't have an issue either embroidex Corey fisher says that's what i use on both your sc 400 and the Futura and brother colors and have no problem renee sorry for the late reply husband is talking to you while you <laughs> I'm mad you said you're trying to listen. <laughs> That's what they do. That's funny. While you're trying to listen, normally use Sophie and Robinson Anton thread for your embroidery. Haven't tried Madeira. Yeah, uh, Robinson Anton is high highfalutin thread according to sources. So I'll have to try them as well at some point. Maria, you use a pair of micro forceps with every small scissors to cut jump stitches. Guess what? I have found micro forceps um, because those are kind of pricey from what I'm finding on like Amazon and whatnot. If you have a uh, Harbor Freight near you, they sell those and they are very inexpensive. So if you want to try the micro forceps, they have them, the small ones. And you can, get, matter of fact, I think they even have the long ones. Not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure that's where I saw them. And, uh, but they have a really cool selection of little, little knickknacks and stuff like that that you can use for your uh, embroidery in your embroidery studio. Matter of fact, since I'm, I got y'all on here, I use these now. I was looking for the uh, package because I had a whole list of them up there on the wall. I don't know what I did with them. Um, but I have, I found these. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? It looks like, um, oh God, I don't wear makeup much except lipstick. Uh, mascara. It looks like mascara brushes, right? See how there's different sizes. One, two, three, four, five different sizes on one little ring. Okay. I got this from Harbor Freight. And what I do with these is, especially on the, uh, I got it for the big machine, the 655. And when I open it up, I clean out the bobbin area. And it's cool because of the different sizes. Like in the main cabin area behind the bobbin uh, carrier, I use this. You know, the bigger one back up in there. And then up in the thing to keep me from having to take that plate off the top every single time, I use the thinner one and get up in there. So these things, especially if you use a lot of uh, your fast frames and the sticky back stabilizer, Man, these are awesome for getting in there and cleaning out the embroidery machine. And I want to say this was like a uh, dollar fifty for this. So I bought, you know, packs of them, and I had them hanging on my uh, pegboard and can't find them. But this was really cool to use uh, in my machine and dust it out, you know. So Harbor Freight has some really cool stuff. This was over. In the area where the air tools are, um, and if you are familiar with air compressors at all, it's in the section where you find the little uh, connectors for air hoses. It's on that wall, and you'll find these. These are 
air hose brushes or something to that effect is the name of them. So this was, I use this. Uh, I'm trying to tell you, Harbor Freight had some awesome stuff. And I like this. I got this from Harbor Freight. Um, and I use these from time to time, not every time, but time to time to hold the needle, taking it in and out, you know. So I, I do a lot with Harbor Freight. I, I like that. So um, if you want to try the micro forceps, like what Maria is using to grab hold of that thread and snip, then that's a good place to go get it. And I'm just talking, and I got five minutes left and didn't even realize it. Estora, your husband bought you a heat press and you did your first few t-shirts this weekend. Congratulations to you. It is. Now, I will admit vinyl is fun. Vinyl is a lot of fun, actually. The weeding sucks. I ain't gonna lie. But it's a lot of fun. So I do like vinyl. Whether I do it full time or not, eh, probably not. But it is fun every so often. Like I said, I send all that to Justin. <laughs> Little Miss Boatsy says, hi, Miss Eve. Hello, darling. I appreciate you being here. Artzology. Artzology. Lord, second time being here. Loving your Janome 500E. Lots to learn as you're a beginner. Well, welcome to the Embroidery Club. We appreciate having you. Embroidery is awesome. <laughs> Terry says, you have a craft magnifier and several teeny scissors to snip the smallest of jump stitches. You hate to see them, so you get rid of as many as you can. And like I said, it's up to the person. So I generally, I don't, I don't worry about those. Devin says, here's a hard question you've been having trouble with. How do you price your embroidery? I do $6.50 minimum, which covers the first thousand stitches and then 50 cents for every thousand stitches after the first. Devin. I, I, I hate telling people how to price their embroidery. I really do. Because it pretty much is going to be based on what's comfortable for you, you know, and if you do a job at those prices and you're fine with that, by the time you're over and done with, kudos to you. My minimum is more than yours. My cost per thousand is more than yours, but that's me. And that's the area that I live in. I know some people, you're saying 50 cents for the thousand stitches. I know some people that charge a dollar or 50 uh, per thousand or a dollar 75 per thousand. I don't. But they probably live in an area where it's they can do that and get away with it because it's a higher price range in that area. So your rule of thumb, generally, you figure out your minimum, set your minimum as you did, um, and then a dollar per thousand. So if you're fine with doing 50, then go right ahead. You're not going to get any judgment from me uh, because it has to work for you. You know, my prices may not work for you. My prices can throw off business you know and i'm okay with that because i prefer to be an exclusive type of embroidery service not just you know walk in and do embroidery i prefer to be more exclusive however that being said uh you have to do what works for you okay brenda scott where did you ladies buy your heat press machines from i purchased mine from amazon and throw myself in there uh, and I have a link to my Amazon um, purchase page below if you would like to check that out. It was pretty affordable. Debbie says, you also got an easy press and a brother's designing cut. Woo! I want to do the vinyl and embroidery. Awesome! I like the um, easy press. I'm, I'm considering investing in that thing because it's really cool. Um, and it seems really simple. And, it, and I love the fact that it's portable actually that's really cool and the designing cut from what i understand is the best cutting machine home cutting machine out there but i haven't tried it yet shayla mckinney you got it last week awesome we're gonna have to ring the bell for you kenya craft head creations hello to you welcome for being here pc6 designs your channel and yourself are awesome <laughs> thank you i appreciate you telling me that oh um, i i try i don't think I'm awesome, but I do like to have fun. So I appreciate you being here. And if you have any suggestions or questions, please, please, please let me know. Miss D Purple One, here's what I do for some of my jump stitches. If I program everything myself, I change the thread color on your software and it helps with that. And yes, there are some software programs that you can remove jump stitches with. Um, and actually the larger machines eliminate the jump stitches for you, which is so cool. I'm trying to tell you. I'm spoiled. 
because when I realized that that thing took the jump stitches out and I didn't have to cut them no more, oh my god, a lot of my a lot of my embroidery is over there when it's a lot of colors and jump stitches. But on the little machines, they don't cut jump stitches, so it'd be nice if they could add that as a bonus feature in on those little machines. But doubt brother will do that. So crafty, hi Eve, depending on the machine or software, jump stitches are set to cut automatically, which is exactly what I just said. Should have ran uh, red ahead and would have known that. <laughs> Justin says Google Plus is family. We are family. We are family. All my embroidery people with me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't need to be <laughs> I don't need to be singing. I swear I don't. Myra Thompson, what's the name of your embroidery machine and heat press? That's Blessing, that's Lily, that's Fifi, and that's Ty. <laughs> um, Fifi and Ty are sick right now, so they have to go to the doctor. But Blessing is over yonder. And why I came up with little silly names, I don't know. But I, I said Lily, Fifi. I thought that was cute. Miss D, purple one. I don't want to know. It's good to know. Uh-oh, Hunter Boat. You were talking to Miss Purple One. Are y'all talking to each other? I'm sorry. Big Up says some software will let you cut between each letter. Commercially, we will set it to keep jump stitches because it adds the to the downtime. Ooh. Good point. Good point. Good point. Because if you're constantly stopping for the jump stitches, that makes a whole lot of sense because it does. It does the cut off. And then it has to move and it has to speed back up and keep going. So it will add to the time. So that makes a lot of sense. A lot of sense. Glam Glam, you have a brother dream creator that came with something. And now all of my chat has moved ahead again. And it, no telling. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let me go back up again. So. I want to thank you guys for being here today. I'm not, a, I'm over time as we see. Oh, here we go. Uh, so I'm going to try and catch up with this chat and then I'll let you guys go because I know um, I don't like to keep y'all on. And then I'm pretty sure I have company coming over this evening. So I want to make sure I get to them. <laughs> your brother, Dream Creator, came with 5x7 and 7x12 hoops, which is the largest hoop size that your machine can accommodate. Yes, Miss Glam Glam, that is absolutely correct. That's an awesome machine. Oh, you are asking what's the which is the largest hoop size that your machine can accommodate. I don't know. I have to check out the brother, Dream Creator. If you have a 7x12, I would assume it will be a 7 by something if they even have a repositional hoop for that machine. So generally the machine comes with the largest size that it can do. Um, that's that's a given with all machines. So I'm assuming seven by 12 officially is the largest that your machine will do. Red Rosa says, thank you for the good advice. You're quite welcome, my darling. And you're welcome as well, Miss Karen. Pam Tivner, hello, darling. Welcome, appreciate you being here. Um, what fonts do you recommend for Sew Up Pro to begin with? Um, I have links below. Stitchtopia is one with really pretty fonts. Um, I also like Applique Corner and Jolson's. Jolson's is very inexpensive and they have a ton of fonts. And their fonts are excellent fonts as well. So I recommend them as well. I actually need to put those down in the um, description, those other two, because I don't have those down there. Ms. Bickup says, I recommend to everyone to pick a day to do your machine maintenance. Always PM your machine. That is absolutely correct. You do need to have a regular weekly, especially maintenance program where you do deep cleaning. Um, and then daily, you do the little light stuff. Um, but like weekly, I would pull out the little funky brushes if you wish to use those. Maria, you use a 60 weight embroidery thread in the bobbin. I use, yep, yeah, I use 60 weight as well. It also helps the upper thread keep properly balanced with the tension. That would be correct. Diane, if no one noticed, hi, Diane. At the top of the side chat, there is two settings. It should be set on live chat. So you see all postings on the side chat. That's really cool. Ask me, did I know that? No, I didn't because I'm learning <laughs> YouTube and how it works at all times. Ethel, how was the function last night? Last night was a lot of fun. It really was. Um, Thursday was way more people, so it was a little more hectic, but it was fun as well. So I definitely enjoy the bling 
parties. Tracy, you made it finally. Hi, Tracy. Welcome, Miss Tracy Etheridge. How are you today? <laughs> Vivian Crosby, hello to you too. Aisha, one, two, three, four. Hello, coming in late, but I love your videos. Thank you. I just brought a new PE770 and learning how to use it, so that means we need to ring the bell for you. <laughs> ring the bell for your 770, Aisha. Congratulations on your baby. Make sure you name your baby. <laughs> And anybody else, remind me real quick, real quick, if I didn't ring the bell for you, please let me know because I will forget. And I want to ring it before we get off and shortly. <laughs> what type heat press do you use? Uh, it's a photo INC heat press. I don't know. It's photo. And I don't know the size right off. It's pretty, pretty decent size heat press. Actually planning on getting another one. Kimberly Green will be in the Charlotte area tomorrow. Girl, don't say that. When can we hook up? Let me know. Email me. Thebabysbooty at gmail.com. I would love to say hi. <laughs> Brenda Scott, how or where do you come up with your design ideas or do you wait for a customer order? Generally, I wait for a customer's order. I have come up with some of my own design ideas. Um, and I thought about selling them. My design ideas, though, were mainly based on baby things uh, because I was designing necklaces for baby bibs. Um, and you know, I, at one point thought about selling them, but I decided not to, I may get back into it. I don't know, but, um, I don't normally do design unless someone requests it generally. Sheila Chan, are you cutting your own bling designs? Can you explain the process right now? I wouldn't want to get into going into the bling process because that's a horse of a completely different color than from embroidery however it's not terribly difficult i do cut my own designs but i purchase my designs from a design bling design company and then i cut my templates and go from there um, i have created my own bling templates before as well there's a whole process behind that um but mm, kind of didn't really want to get into talking about bling on this channel i may i may not i don't know we'll have to see <laughs> But it's not terribly difficult. It really isn't. So Crafty says, which model heat press? Again, it's the uh, photo INC. Ever in them? Are you referring to Polystar thread when you say Amazon thread? That's what I bought from a sewing back place. I purchased, I don't know if it's called Polystar or not, but off of Amazon, it was through Embroidex. Embroidex is where mine came from. Maria, I'll have to get a pack of those tiny brushes. I love to go to Harbor Freight. I do too. I have those same pliers. I've found several other things for my sewing room. Harbor Freight is awesome for the embroidery studio and for repairs and for maintenance. I love Harbor Freight. How do you charge for applique designs since they don't use as many stitches, but they're time consuming considering that you have to take the time to cut the fabric. I run from applique. I'm not going to lie to you. I hate applique with a passion. I just did an applique job. The onesie that I had to replace was applique. Another reason I hate applique, I despise applique, but it's there, it's a factor for embroidery. How I price it, I just go with my gut, and depending upon how many different parts of applique I have to cut out and how intricate it is, that's how I base my price. And I start with my minimum and go up from there based on what I look at, and I'm like, Jesus, oh, that's gonna be. $20 all day long or that's going to be $30 you know and I, I because I've done this for a while I pretty much base it on not on stitches but on time and that's where I start coming up with um, my price Jenny McKinney hello you're late but you're here hello Jenny McKinney Debbie thanks for getting back to you about your problem I'm posting some pictures on Google Plus to show exactly what you are having an issue with if anyone can take a look tell me what's wrong and we'll take a look at that definitely carol coleman d hart i always love listening to your ultimate advice thanks you're quite welcome my darling <laughs> underbolt thank you you're welcome justin mccoy good night to you too don't be taking my tag my happy embroidering from me <laughs> vanessa stuff miss me here sorry i'm late better late than never that's absolutely correct because i get to say hello to you as well Bika, we're all ease babies. We enjoy time spending with Mama Ducky. I'm not nobody's Mama Ducky. I'm the last person that need to be a Mama Ducky. 
House of Combs, your PE 770 will be here tomorrow. Hey, remind me next week so we can ring the bell for you. Debbie, she's one of the highlights of all. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Nicole, how are you tonight? I'm good. I'm good. I can't, I can't complain. I really can't. <laughs> a little, little boo-boo in my finger where I tried to snatch my finger off. But, you know, other than that, I'm great. <laughs> Big up, we had a 17 cent design shopping spree last week. Did you share? Of course I did. And I completely forgot because I was tied up trying to get those parties out. So I did forget. But if it's still going on, we'll post it in the Google Plus group. If you haven't done that for me already, Leah, you're late. It's okay. Not a problem, my dear. Most important thing is you cared enough to show up, and we really, really appreciate that. So, you guys, 10, 11 minutes after 8, I apologize so sincerely because I don't like to run over, but I do appreciate catching up with you all. If you haven't already, please give a thumbs up for the video if you found it helpful and the interaction was also awesome with you guys i really always appreciate the feedback and the conversation if you haven't please subscribe and hit the bell beside the subscribe button because the bell lets you know when i am on live and it also lets you know when we post new videos and i look forward to you guys watching those and if you hit like on those too i'd appreciate that too <laughs> So I want to thank you all for coming this evening. If you ever have any questions or any suggestions, please shoot me an email at thebabysbooty at gmail.com or you can join the Google Plus group, which the link to that is in the description below. As always, I look forward to seeing you all every week on Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And until that next time, I want to wish you all happy embroidering thank you so very much and look forward to seeing you again next week bye <laughs>